Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined in the studio today by Shaka Hislop. We'll kick off today's show, where else, but with the league leaders in the Premier League, Tottenham <laughs> taking on Fulham. Goodness me, the Postacoglu dream continues. And with Arsenal dropping points, of course, at the weekend, that draw against Chelsea, their North London rivals are now two points clear at the top of the table. And in fact, it was a record-breaking result for Ange Postacoglu, as he is the first manager in the history of the Premier League to get 23 points in nine Premier League games. The first one ever with his first time in the league and the first time matches to accumulate this many points. And also, this is a Spurs side that lead the Premier League in shots, in shots on goal and chances created. A lot of positive things then to say about Spurs as we're a quarter away through the season as we welcome in uh, Mario and Frank. Mario, what in particular is it that you like about Spurs at the moment? I, I, I like, you know, now you're watching a team that even when they don't have the ball, they are very calm. They don't care if you have the ball. They set up well, they're confident, and also the changes that he made, you understand? I mean, like uh, Saka highlighted already, Rich, Rich Allison playing or coming from the left. Look, we, it, they have tried so many times to play him as a centre striker, and um, at Everton, he played that role, but then he was also coming out as, as, as a second kind of like, or more attacking forward. But he started as a wide player first. Now they're playing wide as well, and he looks very comfortable. And we all know about some. I mean, you know, that's uh, always been a threat, but it's, of course, Harry Kane, he left. But as a team overall, I was always interested with Basuma and Saar in the middle. So for Hoiberg to come in and see that it did not dismantle the team in a, in a way of balance, I thought it was a very good thing. And I could see that, yeah, they look very comfortable. And it's pretty enjoyable to watch coming from a guy that supports the rivalry team. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it, Frank? Because I think, unless you're an Arsenal fan, this, you can't but be impressed with what's happening at Spurs and enjoy what you're seeing on the pitch. Yeah, you have, you have only to be fair, and what you see is, is spectacular, especially because what we because of what we saw. Uh, yeah. Some year, so, well, last last year, the year before, and the year before, and the year before, <laughs> that was appalling. And uh, and uh, and you know now that's almost with the same guys. You know, you have a different football. As Mario said, very comfortable when they have the ball, very calm, but also the the team spirit is spot on when they don't have the ball. They know exactly what to do with uh, uh, Van de Ven and Romero at the back, you know, they feel sure, secure, everything is there. And then you have the Son family, Richarlison, Son, Son and Madison, who does the oh, job. and does very good, and, and, Frank. Sorry, do the job. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I, it took me like two hours to get it. <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, you feel that, except maybe in the middle of the part where I found them that they couldn't find a solution. At first, the first half for like, I would say 20, 25 minutes, and they had to go on the side with Richarlison and, uh, and, uh, and, um, uh, and, and Poro most of the time. But otherwise, you know, I found them very structured, uh, again, very comfortable, very calm, and knowing that at some point they will get something out of it. And that's when you are top of the top, and they deserve to be first in the league because of the result they get, the way they get those results, and, uh, and the professionalism that they show on the field. It's easy to be tired and cynical for more of our pundits maybe than others, uh, yeah. Shaq, but they're not here today. So it is nice to kind of have a positive outlook on this because yeah. you can only be impressed with what Ange Postacoglu's done. No, to, to Frank's point that um, he, he's getting this kind of a tune out of pretty much the same team from last season, I'll be honest, I'll... I'll I thought this was a far less team than we saw last season. Well, coming, of course, com you coming in ex exactly coming into this season, um, Harry Kane's gone. You wonder who's going to who's going to fill that void. You replace Hugo Lloris with Vicario, who, who comes in. And I, again, I'll be honest. I thought the first couple of games he looked a little bit nervy. I thought he, he, he very well may have been a liability. I couldn't be any more wrong, especially on, on today's evidence. He made a save at nil-nil. That was simply outstanding. He then made a second at two-nil when, when Spurs were, were two up. That, again, was, was just simply incredible. And it shows, and of course, I, as a goalkeeper, I am seeing his confidence kind of bloom during the course of, this, during the course of the season. 
as has everybody from Spurs. I thought Son started the season a little bit shakily and then he scored that hat-trick against Burnley, I think it was, and hasn't looked back since. Richarlison is, is, is filling a need on the left-hand side and, and, and doing reasonably well out there when he'd struggled for confidence in both the, the, the white of Spurs and, and the yellow of Brazil. And he is getting, a, and, and has made a play out of Madison, and we've discussed Madison yeah. all season long as to whether mm -hmm. he was good enough to play in, in, in a top four team. Um, and he is just pulling all these strings for Spurs. Yeah. So now you take a team that, and again, I'll only speak for myself, I thought was far less than the team of last season, and is improving these players individually, and Spurs are looking twice the team that, that anybody expected them to, Postecoglou has got to get a lot of credit. By the same time, the players are, are, are just playing out of their skins right now. Has James Madison surprised you, Mario? No, because I always liked him when he was at Leicester. And him coming to... We also have to understand, eh, when we play in a team like a Madison, the way he wants to play, he's very creative and try to dictate the tempo of his team all the time when he was doing it at Leicester. Now he, does, he goes a step up. But then you have two guys behind you. I mentioned them before, you know, Sam... Sar and Basuma. If you have those two behind you today, they, he didn't play because, you know, uh, that Hoiberg played. But when you have two key guys behind you, it makes you very comfortable in the sense of like, if he lose the ball, you know, those two behind me are going to handle my job for me. So I can think about going forward and the creative side. That's why he looks that comfortable. And that's why I think what Saka said, they could have like maybe as individual you understand? I can find myself in that. In the, as individual, there may be, you know, there are maybe places that they could say they had, you know, like, come on, we cannot uh, forget the Kane job, what he did for so many years. But away from that, I think as a team, they look better as a team. And I'm not talking individuals. I'm talking as a team. The spirit is incredible in this team. So that's why sometimes we just have to wait. You know, look, it's going great. If they can, you know, weather the storm in December then guys, <laughs> we have to hold our hands up and say, this is a team, though. How difficult, Frank, is it to defend this kind of Son-Madison partnership? Uh, well, it, you need to be very re uh, related to your midfielders as a centre-back. You have to make sure that you work together because Madison just play behind Son and, they, uh, and sometimes they they interchange their, their, their positioning and uh, it's very difficult because they're very mobile, they understand each other very well, they talk a lot, we can see that too, and they, they, they love the spaces between the midfielders and the defenders. And it's always hard to cope with that. And if you try to get a little bit closer as a defender to your midfielders, they will take the opportunity to get behind you and to go in the space. So it's always difficult when you play uh, against uh, against uh, very uh, 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 small players, but I want to have a word on and on on Fulham if you if you want because it's uh, for me it's about what we see in a modern football. I mean, you have a player who was a left back. His name is Basie, who had to play centre back on the right side from uh, decided from the coach. The guy is a left footed, played on the right side, and then you try to play from the back. So big, two big mistakes to help, and I think they didn't need that, uh, to help to Spurs, make me think that now they're kind of kamikaze, you know. They go for that, they go to know at that one point, and we saw also with goalkeepers, and Chaka can talk about uh, Sanchez or Raya doing the same thing. I agree to try to play from the back, but when you have a risk, and especially when you are not in your right position, why do you want to take a risk? I would have been Silva. I would have said, you know what, Basie, I put you there because I don't have the choice. Today, I have injuries. But please, never play from the back. Kick the ball very, very far. We play against Tottenham. That was insane what I, what I saw today from Fulham. Uh, let's just go back to Spurs and let's uh, address the big questions then, Shaka. Title contenders, what are the odds to win the title? Um, right now, I, I still think... Um... They trail, they're their fourth favourites. I, I, I still feel that City, Arsenal and Liverpool will ultimately finish higher than them. Um, Spurs, of course, don't have European football to, to worry about and, and that works in their favour. But just in terms of teams, in terms of squads, and despite the start that Spurs have made, I still think those three 
are slightly ahead of Spurs. Um, Let's take a look at how the bookies then have it set as to who are the title favourites. And you're right, Shaq, it is those three teams who've oh. seen it. But Tottenham, only 10 to 1. Yeah, and, 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 and listen, as I say, we're, as far as where the money goes, um, that that's those are very good odds, given what we've seen so far this season. City at 4 to 6 haven't looked anything like their previous selves, or, or in, indeed a team that should be 4 to 6 on at, at, at this stage of the of the season. So it's it's there. I, I still think, listen, it's, it's a marathon. We keep reminding ourselves of that. There's a long way to go yet. And while Spurs have certainly been far better than we expected, and some of their football has, has, has been outstanding, I just wonder, as this season drags on, as injuries and suspensions become a factor, can they continue to, to replicate that kind of form? We know the others can. Right, Frank, I feel that's a conversation we had about Leicester back in the day when, of course, they <laughs> defied all the odds to go all the way. We were just waiting for the wheels to fall off and they never did. Is there a chance that Spurs can do the same? Yes, there is. Uh, if Manchester City doesn't wake up, and if they do right. wake up, uh, it's going to be impossible to, to stop them because we know that they are better than anybody else and they proved it last season. They have so much point be they were so much point behind the Gunners and they came back with strength, with confidence and, uh, and Arsenal um, uh, failed at the end because maybe of injuries but also because mentally they were unprepared. So it can <laughs> happen the same to Spurs. No, I don't think they're going to finish fourth. I mean, according to what I see right now, yeah, Liverpool can do something but sometimes, you know, they show inconsistency, especially at the beginning of the, beginning of the game. They concede goals. And I'm sorry, Gunners right now? As I already say in the beginning of the season, they would have to prove their consistency and to prove the second season that it's possible to do like the former one. But what I saw against Lens or what I saw against Chelsea doesn't tell me that the Gunners are ready to fight for the title. Not right now. Maybe, maybe soon, but right now... Uh, I put City, I hesitate between Tottenham and, uh, and uh, Liverpool, and I put Arsenal fourth. Wow, so Spurs may be finishing second to Manchester City, according to Frank. Let's take a look at the odds. Meanwhile, for them to finish in the top four, they're very much out of that conversation at the start of the season. No one believed that they'd be battling for a Champions League place. How that has changed now. Look at that. Spurs 11 to 10 to finish in a top four place, Mario. What a turnaround. Would they have your money? I mean, at the moment, that's why I was... Because we, we all, like all, all of us, we have the experience and we know that, you know, the, the busy program is going to come. And I know people don't want to highlight that or don't want to talk about it or say certain things. But guys, we all know, like, OK, the guy that won it so many times in a row and, and proved himself so much in the time when we were playing was Ferguson. And Ferguson always said, like, in the time of December, it becomes a different situation. And that is where, uh, you know, Frank Heller highlighted and said consistency. This is also a team that also plays a lot of the times the same players. Eh? So physically, we have to understand to see if they manage to keep them all fit as long as they can. Because that's going to be one of the most crucial things in this team. Keep them fit and make sure they keep their physical standards up in the sense of like, you know, don't overwork, don't get too tired. Because sometimes they got to tweak some things, eh? put a player in and take the other one out, because what are you going to play? The whole season, Son? Medicine combination is great. Okay, Saar had what I highlighted, Benzuma. Uh, Perot, you understand, he goes up and down all the time. It, 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 those, are, those are highlights that I just give you, you understand? And that cannot go the whole season. They have to be clever. Postacoglu has to be clever how he changes certain things up on the right time. 